Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we discovered Spotify for Podcasters, we have had so much fun trying out all of the features like Q&As and polls that let us be really creative and engage with our audience. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Well, we said we wanted a full news week and the family delivered. Beatrice gives birth. Kate makes her great return. Harry and Meghan cover Time Magazine. More Charles drama and oh, so much more right here on episode 38 of Podcast Royal. My, 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 we have a full slate of news to cover this week. Welcome back to episode 38 of Podcast Royal. How are you, my friend? And I, as always, have to know what you are into this week. Well, I'm doing really well. And for our listeners, just to catch you guys up on what's happened since last week, Rachel and I did actually get to go have dinner together in person. Um, And we had a fabulous dinner at a wonderful restaurant in Birmingham. It was so good. I ate so much food. I had oysters. I had, did I have the grouper or the red snapper? I can't remember who had had the red snapper and I had the grouper. Yes. And then I had, um, the, the, oh my gosh, what was the bread pudding for dessert? So I w it was, it was kind of an early birthday celebration dinner. My birthday is on Saturday, September 25th. And we just had, and we had drinks and it was just lovely to see you and, The company was the best part of it, but the food was fantastic as well. I totally agree. Yeah, I had a fabulous risotto grouper, wine, and of course, just a wonderful time chatting with you in person. Um, So that was fun. And we'll definitely keep doing that um, Mm -hmm. on the regular. We'll we'll find some more good restaurants uh, to check out around town. Mm -hmm. But this week I was thinking about what I'm into and I feel like (laughs) this is not very exciting, which I I feel like I preface every (laughs) what I'm into with that. But um, (laughs) this week I'm just really into making playlists (laughs) on Spotify. There's nothing wrong with that. (laughs) Okay, well, let me just say, I don't really do that normally. Um, And I am a big podcast listener when I have things to do around the house. But, you know, I'm sure no one is surprised by the fact that radio today is just not, you know, it's not what it used to be. And I have just gone down these rabbit holes on Spotify where I find these like really great songs that I haven't heard in years. And I've been making some throwback playlists. I've made some cooking playlists, um, you know, playing music when I'm making dinner or doing things around the house or in the yard. So um, I've had some some fun throwback tunes and some other new stuff to listen to lately. So that, that's what I'm into this week. What is on one's cooking playlist? I would like to know. So when I, you know, making a cooking playlist, I feel like I'm always in the mood for something like Frank Sinatra or like, you know, have a glass of wine, make some Italian dinner or or something like that. Um, That's always, that's always a good option when you're cooking. I love it. I, 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 I can totally see that just like kind of waltzing around the kitchen cooking (laughs) and Frank Sinatra in the background. Okay. So I want to read a very kind DM that we got from a listener named Maria. I love getting kind DMs, emails. It makes my whole day. 
So she said, hello, girls. I just wanted to say hi from Bolivia. How cool is that? I just discovered your podcast this weekend on a road trip and loved it in all caps. I am really looking forward to the next episode. Then she says, I was very happy when I discovered we are the same age. I don't have kids either, but really enjoyed the segment on Cambridge kids clothes. Way to go, Jessica. Awesome. I love, I love our listeners and, you know, reach out. We always respond. That one took me a couple of days to find. Cause it was in that hidden like folder where it says like requests message requests, but we always will get back to you. So thank you, Maria. And we're so thankful that you are a listener. And I can't believe people hear our voices in Bolivia. <laughs> that makes me very happy. So so cool being connected to people all over the place and Mm -hmm. sharing in this love of royals and, um, and just meeting new people that way. It's awesome. So that's a great review. That makes me so happy. So this week I am into, it's another TV show for me. I don't know. I've just, all I do is, is watch TV shows in my spare time, but I am into Ted Lasso. Have you seen Ted Lasso yet? What do you think my answer? I'm going to stop is? asking that question. I'm going to stop asking that I question. Just, TV for me a lot of times is like background noise. I feel like I start watching something and I'm so bad about finishing it. And I do have a lot of shows I want to watch and I do have a few favorites. But if I watch a TV show, I feel like I'm way behind. I'm never the first person to watch a new show. Well, I'm actually behind on Ted Lasso. So Ted Lasso has been out for like two years and I don't yeah, have... I don't have Apple TV plus normally, and I can't believe it took me this long to get into the show. I have Apple TV plus now because I'm watching season two of the morning show with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon, which is also a great show. And I decided I was out of shows. I decided to try Ted Lasso off of the advice of a friend. And this weekend, literally all I did was watch Ted Lasso. I binged both seasons over the weekend. It is so funny and heartwarming and you just feel good when you watch it and it is a total yes for me and if it, if my recommendations are not enough for you it not just you Jessica but you listeners it just won tons of emmys over the weekend so it is so 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 good and of course i'm also into seeing you last week such a great time and i can't wait to do it again definitely I agree. Yeah. My TV shows are those that you can kind of put on in the background. And if you miss a little bit, it's not a really big Mm -hmm. deal. I mean, I've mentioned the great British bake off millions of times on here. You know, Mm -hmm. I love the office, um, all of the funny, lighthearted, I love a good Hallmark movie. So now there's a show I have, I've never seen the office. So see, that's what everybody says. When I say that I have never seen a single episode of the office. So when the office, I don't have cable right now, even, but when the office was really popular, I I go through stages of having cable, not having cable, having cable, not having cable. And when the office was really popular was one of those stages that I did not have cable. So I just have never watched it. But I mean, I have friends who that is their show. Like that is their equivalent of my sex in the city. Like that is their favorite show. They've watched it like, like, two, three times the entire series, not just a season. So it must be. Yeah. I mean, the office is hilarious. I can't, I can't believe that you've got to put that on your list. Um, I mean, if we're talking throwback shows that we've seen every episode a million times, I'm definitely a Seinfeld girl. Um, I never really got into friends. Not really my, my thing, but Seinfeld's Seinfeld. coming to Netflix next week. Me. I know. I will see. I own all the DVDs, but given technology, I don't really sit down and pop DVDs anymore. So um, (laughs) I'm excited. It's coming to Netflix. (laughs) I know. I know. I, I might, I've seen, of course, I mean, everybody who grew up in the nineties, like we did has seen Seinfeld, but I have never seen it the entire way through. I just will watch it when it's on, on a random night back when I had cable, which I no longer do. So, okay. We have way too much news to continue on. We could go down this rabbit hole all day. But we have to share the biggest piece of news of the week, and that is P- Princess Beatrice's mom. Well, actually, she's been a stepmom for a while now, but she gave birth to her first biological child over the weekend with husband. Are you ready for this? Eduardo Mapelle Mazzi, which I just love saying. <laughs> <laughs> I wish they were in the news every week. 
<laughs> so I could say, Eduardo Mapelli Mazzi. Um, so here's what we know. It is a little girl. And as of this recording on Tuesday night, we don't know her name yet. And she was born on Saturday, September 18th at 1142 PM in London, weighing six pounds and two ounces. This is the queen's 12th great grandchild so congratulations to b and edo from podcast Royal. this is so exciting and so here are our most up-to-date name predictions which weirdly have not really been circulating during b's pregnancy until now okay the number one choice is matilda i don't get it and then followed by a lot of italian inspired names like florence arabella cecilia francesca and finally rounding it out of course we had to throw in elizabeth in there because of course we did so what do you think matilda i don't get it i don't i don't know of any royal connection to the name matilda there could be one i just don't know about but not really sure how matilda got on the list i definitely don't think elizabeth is going to be at least not a first name. Um, I think Francesca could sound really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Again, I'm, you know, I don't know, Florence, Arabella, Cecilia. I mean, they all sound sort of Italian. Maybe that's kind of how they made the list. I'm still holding out for Clementine. Um, yeah, I remember that I being on the list. list. <laughs> <laughs> and I really don't know how that one got on the list either, honestly. I'm not sure where any of these names have come from, but they are, I mean, they're all great. They would all be really cute. Well, we know where Elizabeth comes from. We know where all of these Italian inspired sounding names come from. If listeners aren't aware, Edo is Italian, but Matilda, like, I don't, I don't get that, but watch her be named Matilda. So, and also watch them announce the name tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, right when this episode drops. That's what happens all the time. All the news comes out on Wednesday mornings, right when our episode drops. So we'll see what happens but congratulations B and Edo this is wonderful news so we are we are thrilled for you so okay this has been bothering me all week before we go any further when listening to last week's episode I accidentally said that Spencer was Diana's middle name of course I meant that it was her maiden name so I just wanted to clarify that so that I can have a good night's sleep again sarcasm kind of but it's been bothering me you even talked about that at dinner <laughs> oh I know it has been in my in my head all week long and it was just one of those things you're just in the moment talking and it slips out and I was listening to it I was like, no, that I know that that's not her middle name. Her middle name is Francis, just in case anybody wants to know. Diana Francis Spencer. So, okay, on Wednesday, speaking of news coming out on Wednesdays, on Wednesday of last week, the day our episode came out, we saw Harry and Meghan take the cover of Time magazine for its Time 100 Most Influential People in the World issue. So shockingly, this is actually the first time the Sussexes have formally posed together for a magazine cover ever. And the article about them was written by friend Jose Andres, who is the founder of World Central Kitchen. He wrote in part, quote, it would be much safer to enjoy their good fortune and stay silent. That's not what Harry and Meghan do or who they are. In a world where everyone has an opinion about people they don't know, the Duke and Duchess have compassion for the people they don't know. They don't just opine. They run toward the struggle. Now, there are some absolutely gorgeous shots taken inside the magazine, too. I have seen three shots, and I need an olive-colored turtleneck immediately. So congratulations to Harry and Megan on this huge honor. Uh, let's talk about those three photos. Jessica, what do you think of these looks? Okay, so I was actually trying to find these photos and have been unsuccessful. I don't have a copy of the magazine, um, but of course I saw the the cover photo. So you'll have to talk to me a little bit about some of the other ones. There is a meme, and I, I'm, I'm just going to say, there's a meme. <laughs> there is a meme circulating everywhere about um, how Harry looks like a hairdresser standing behind <laughs> Megan. Yes, and we talked you, about that too. Once you see that, you can't unsee it because it's kind of true. But anyway, so there's the cover shot of Megan in all white looking beautiful as always. And then the other two shots, there's a shot of her in 
um, like an, and actually Harry's wearing like an olive green suit. So way to rock that Harry. But um, <laughs> Megan is in some Victoria Beckham pants that are stunningly cut and an olive green turtleneck. And then she puts on a coat. I believe that coat is from the row also olive green and it's her and Harry walking outside by what looks like that tree that they always have in their photos, like their pregnancy announcement and all, like that big willow tree or whatever it is. So the, I, I haven't gotten my hands on a physical copy of the magazine either, but I've seen three photos and they are all absolutely stunning. So yeah, um, I, I love the all white look. Um, the white blouse was really nice. It was really soft. Her hair looked great, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, I saw that she was wearing Princess Diana's Cartier watch um, and mm -hmm. she had on her Cartier love bracelet. Um, and then I saw some reports about her wearing a pinky ring that was supposed to be symbolizing women's empowerment or something. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So... You know, I, I mean, I think she looked great. I I have to agree. I don't really love the way they had Harry kind of crouching back there behind her, you know, in the all black. I think they could have really um, highlighted both of them in a better way if they had maybe, I don't know. I think he needed a different outfit and needed a different pose. But I mean, it was a great picture. I, I just, I would have done something a little bit different with their, with their poses. I actually preferred the photo of them inside wearing the olive green to the shot that ended up on the cover. But I mean, who am I? To, I'm not a photographer. So, I mean, they just like Megan, just, I mean, her style is, it's just everything goals to me. It's impeccable. And um, I, I really want to own something olive. Actually, I, one of my favorite shirts is olive green. I wear it a, a lot. I'm sure you've seen me in it, but I don't have a turtleneck that's olive green. So I need to make that a life goal for my 35th year of life. So speaking of Harry and Megan, we also learned today that they will make their first joint appearance since the birth of Lily in June, this upcoming Saturday, which is my birthday in New York City. They will be in Central Park at Global Citizen Live, which will feature performances from the likes of Jennifer Lopez, Lizzo, Coldplay, and more. So looking forward to seeing what uh, they, specifically she, wears to that. And finally, the great Kate Waite is over, although I will miss saying the great Kate Waite because mm -hmm. that was fun. We saw Kate back at work quite a bit this week, actually, but for, for the first time last Wednesday, she looked stunning in a cream blazer, navy pants. I loved the look. And how cool was it that she arrived at the event in an aircraft that was used to help transport people out of Afghanistan. I thought her emerging from the aircraft was such a powerful moment. So two months and four days is too long to be without you, Kate, but we've seen her a couple of other times since then. And so how good is it to have her back? Yeah, I have to agree. I love the shots of her coming out of the aircraft. I thought those were really incredible photos. Um, I have to say, I didn't love her outfit. Um, I loved it. it. Favorites. Uh, I mean, I've seen, I've seen better, but, um, but you know, she was out, <laughs> was it today? She was out and about, yeah. um, she had this, uh, sort of like brown plaid blazer. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a really nice fall look with the skinny pants. Um, it was very British, but, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm really glad to see her out and about. And, you know, I feel like the Cambridge family accomplished sort of exactly what they set out to do, which, I mean, obviously, I don't know if this was their intention, but it feels like they kind of went off the grid in August. We didn't see them or hear from them. All these rumors and, you know, drama about the royal family was swirling in the summer and everything just kind of like, I mean, sort of fizzled out a little bit and they've kind of quietly gone back to work and it's been a relatively, I don't know, it's, they're focused on their engagements, but otherwise I feel like it's just back to, to normal work for them. So um, yeah. I like it. I I'm excited to see more. Yeah. And we learned this week that Kate, as well as William, Charles, and Camilla will attend the premiere of the new James Bond film, No Time to Die on September 28th. So that means we'll get Kate in a gorgeous gown. Can't wait for it. 
And speaking of the Cambridges, Kate is back at work. William is back at work. He's been in the news quite a bit this week for the Earthshot Prize, which is really cool, actually. He has a book called Earthshot, How to Save Our Planet that comes out this month. He wrote the foreword for it. And the book highlights what the Royal Foundation says is, quote, the urgency of the environmental challenges facing our world, end quote. So William actually is said to have gotten the idea for the Earthshot Prize while he was visiting Namibia three years ago. And ahead of the big gala on October 17th, a series of five films called the Earthshot Prize, Repairing Our Planet, will air on Discovery Plus beginning October 3rd. And then if you miss that, for some reason, all five episodes of the series will air on Discovery in the U.S. on October 16th, and the big award ceremony will be streamed live from Discovery's Facebook page the next day, October 17th. So October is going to be a huge month for William. On Friday, last Friday, William introduced the 15 Earthshot Prize teams who are finalists for the big $1.4 million prize, and interest, interestingly, none are British. Not a one of them are British. I um, heard that. <laughs> yeah, but just, and they did say something like, well, I'm sure there will be British finalists in the future, which I'm sure there will be. But just as a reminder, according to William, quote, the Earthshot Prize aims to mobilize collective action around our unique ability to innovate, problem solve, and repair our planet. They received 750 submissions from 14 countries all of whom I'm sure we'll meet at the Earthshot Awards on October 17th. So who, William has been busy. Is this a passion project of William's or what? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I heard about some of the finalists and, and some of the things that they proposed. And I think it's pretty cool. It's bringing a lot of awareness to a cause that he's passionate about. I think it's a fun competition. And I think it'll be really interesting to see how it goes. So um, I'm excited for him. Yeah, I've kind of blocked off that weekend of October 16th and 17th. I mean, let me tell you, during COVID, my social calendar is extremely full. That is massive sarcasm. So I had to clear tons of events off of my calendar, October 16th and 17th for Earthshot Prize. But don't worry, I did it. And so I can't wait to see the big gala, to see which uh, innovation wins. And it's just really cool because... You know, I, he said, William has said in the past that he wants to be able to look his kids in the eye and say, I did my part and he is. And so I like action. I like, you know, putting, putting your head down and doing the work and William is doing that. So William's dad, Charles also has had a bad week, but there is a, a bright spot. He announced a new program of his own this week aimed at educating UK students on how to eliminate food waste. The initiative is called Food for the Future and will be operated <laughs> through the Prince's Foundation, which da, 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 is still the subject of much scrutiny. So Michael Fawcett, we talked about him last week on the show, has resigned amid claims that the Prince's Foundation was offered a six-figure sum from a Russian donor. A spokesperson for the foundation said, quote, the Prince's Foundation takes very seriously the allegations made in recent news articles and is committed to the highest ethical standards. These changes to the Board of Trustees will not impact the scope or timing of the rigorous independent investigation already underway. So, okay, this is not looking good, Jessica. I am not sure that Charles can win on this one, either he was asleep at the wheel of his own foundation that shows poor leadership, or he is somehow culpable. I would love your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, I, I mean, it sounds like they are taking all of this very seriously, and it seems like if it was something he would have had knowledge of, you know, he probably would have stopped this, or at least I like to think that. You know, I think it's one of those things that we'll just have to wait because I feel like I just don't have enough inside details to make a good call on this one. Um, it's definitely, you know, questionable, um, some of the stuff that we've heard, but I, I just don't feel like I've heard enough detail to really have a strong opinion on 
on, you know, what could be going on behind the scenes. But on that note, that is pretty cool that he's focusing on eliminating food waste and, <laughs> and educating you about that. I'm sorry, but that learn. gets buried under the, it is cool, but it, it totally gets lost in the sea of bad news for him this week. For sure. But hey, win some, you lose some, I guess. I don't know. I mean, we'll see what happens, but I don't think it's good for him either way you slice the cake, you know, I mean, it's either. Right. And I, if, if I've read anything about Charles over the years, he's really involved in the foundation. So, yeah, well, you know, this whole story gives me Prince Andrew scandal vibes. It's like, you know, we don't, obviously we don't know what happened behind the scenes. He may have done X, Y, Z. He may not have done X, Y, Z, but any way you slice it, it doesn't seem good. Yeah. You um, don't win. You don't walk right. away a winner from this. Also speaking of Andrew, who really don't have a whole lot of Andrew updates this week, which is okay by me. I'm okay. Skipping talking about Andrew for a week, but, um, I, it just feels kind of like, um, almost like Charles is the sacrificial lamb of the week. And uh, we're, it's a decoy away from the real issue. I mean, this is a real issue. Don't get me wrong. But um, the real, the real, real issue is Andrew. And so um, everybody's just having all kinds of trouble this week. So um, it was also revealed this week that Prince Philip's will will remain secret for at least 90 years to protect the dignity of the family. I, I, those are not my words. Those are um, the rulings word. So apparently it's customary for the wills of senior royals to be sealed. Do you have any thoughts or ideas uh, as to 90 years is a long time. I mean, the queen is not going to be around 90 years from now. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I mean, I, I actually do think this is a good practice. Um, you know, if you think about it in 90 years time, as you said, current family members, I mean, even Prince William, um, won't be around. And so what's in his will won't really be relevant to the next generation. So I think it's just a way to kind of keep those types of details private among the family. And I don't really know that 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 concerns the public or that people need to know what's in his will. So I mean, I don't have a problem with it. I, I guess you could make an argument that people I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Do people have a right to know that information? Only if it's public money, but I don't think, I mean, we have to keep yeah. in mind that, Will, that William, that Philip is, you know, he comes from good stock on his own, you know? Right. I mean, I think if it's, if it's his private wealth and his, his private will, I, I don't really feel like that needs to be publicized. So I'm, I'm, I'm cool with that. I like the way you worded that because yeah it's it really might not be any of our business as much as we try to make all of their business our business that might not be our business so um from the spencer side of the house it has been announced that diana the musical is coming to netflix october 1st again we'll be watching that for sure and diana's brother charles spencer has written a new book all these royally adjacent people writing fiction <laughs> Um, it's not funny. Good for them. The white ship, which Charles calls, which Charles himself calls quote game of Thrones meets Titanic. The book is already a bestseller in the UK and will hit stands in the U S October 19th. I read her heart for a compass and it was pretty good. So you did? I, you didn't tell me that. Yeah, I did. And I'll have to, I'll have to hook you up, but, um, I'll, I'll read the white ship. Look, I read every book I can get my hands on. Um, okay. so the crown swept the Emmys this past weekend. It took home pretty much everything it possibly could take home in, in the drama category. It took home best drama, best actor in a drama for Josh O'Connor playing Prince Charles, best actress in a drama for Olivia Coleman, best supporting actor in a drama for Tobias Menzies, best supporting actress in a drama for Gillian Anderson, directing for a drama series for Jessica Hobbs, writing for a drama series for Peter Morgan, and wow. even guest actress for Claire Foy. So wow, it makes me even more excited for season five and congratulations to all of the people that make the crown happen because I love all of you and you make me so happy even though I binge all of your seasons in one day and then I'm left to wait two years for more content but that's my own fault not yours so to round out the royal rundown I have the sweetest piece of news to share 
Elise, okay, I always mispronounce this and I have, okay, y'all are gonna laugh at me. I have practiced pronouncing her name this week to myself and I still did it wrong. Elise, that's not right either. I, I get like stage fright with her name anyway. The bride of James Middleton <laughs> revealed this week that she wore mother-in-law Carol Middleton's wedding dress from 1980 as her something borrowed, saying, quote, while talking about dresses with Carol and sharing ideas during lockdown for inspiration, I tried on her wedding dress and fell in love with it. It fitted me perfectly and was exactly what I wanted. It always troubled me that wedding dresses are only worn once. So it was amazing to give such a beautiful dress a second lease of life. End quote. That makes me so happy. That's so sweet. Like that talk about mother-in-law cool. goals. Well, and I felt like the dress just looked like it was made for her in the occasion. So that's really, really cool that it was um, originally her mother-in-law's. I would have never even guessed that. I know. I, I wouldn't have either. I didn't even think to look at what Carol Middleton wore when she married Michael in 1980. And in that dress, you're right. It's so perfect for her that it's wild to think that that isn't her original dress, but she made it her own. And it was just ugh, so beautiful. And just, I mean, how touching is that? So um, I just, that's, that's my happy news of the week and what I've hung my hat on when I've had like a bad week is that's that's an adorable story so that's that's it for the royal rundown I call that a pretty packed week yes that was a really good um full news week full I news week the I most love it. since um since before their summer break so all right you want to hear our next segment oh yeah in the spirit of Princess Beatrice giving birth this week, I thought it would be fun to share some royal baby facts. Um, I actually came across an article on Good Housekeeping, and they had several really awesome facts about royal babies. I narrowed it down to a few, and I think one of my one of my facts on here was actually from another website I found, but most of these are from Good Housekeeping. So we'll jump right in. So fact number one. Royal babies are brought into the world with a whole host of helpers. Um, Rachel, I'm sure you probably know this, but I was really blown away by how many people are actually there to assist with the delivery of the baby. So for example, when the Duchess of Cambridge gave birth to Princess Charlotte, the medical professionals there to assist included two obstetricians, three anesthesiologists, four surgical staff members, two special care staffers, four pediatricians, a lab technician, and two midwives. What? Is that crazy? <laughs> Why? 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 I guess they want all the best. I don't know. I was, I had no idea there were that many people present for, um, for Charlotte's birth. That's excessive. Yeah. So, um, really, really cool. I don't know. Um, I didn't have the numbers for all of the royal births, but, um, but that was really interesting. All right. So fact number two, royal births used to require a witness to be present. So up until Prince Charles was born, the British royal secretary would attend royal births. And this made the event, you know, sort of official, I guess you would call it. Um, but it was actually Queen Elizabeth who put an end to this tradition. Um, she favored having greater privacy when giving birth. So they don't do that anymore. But, um, but used to, the secretary would be present and just document the event happening. Again, why? <laughs> you know that? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm finding everything you're saying really, really bizarre, but okay. Um, okay so you, you definitely, you know, this one. So in prior generations, um, the father was actually not present at the birth of their children. And yeah. I think we've talked about this before. Um, Prince Philip was reportedly playing squash when Prince Charles was born. Um, but it was reported that Prince Albert was present for some of the births of Queen Victoria's children. I think she had like nine children or something. Yeah, and, yeah. And he was actually there for for some of them. So I'm sure that was very um, not normal back in the day. I feel day, like but. that's not just a royal thing, like dads not being present. Like I feel like dads like weren't always there certainly not in the delivery room they might have been like you know in the waiting room but I, right. I think it's relatively a new 
tradition to have dads in, in, I don't look when I give birth, I'm not sure I want my husband in the, <laughs> that's, that's kind of scarring for everyone involved. So I feel like now though, most people, you know, it would be unthinkable for him not to be there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, like if William wasn't, if William was playing squash while Kate was giving birth, it, people would have a field day with that. So <laughs> that wouldn't be acceptable anymore, but I feel like it, it's more of a new tradition to have dads in the waiting room. I don't think Philip was like the only dad in the, in the forties and fifties that was you know, playing squash right. or golf or whatever. No, for sure. I agree. Okay. So the next fact is that parents typically give Royal babies at least three names. Um, and mm -hmm. each of those names has some sort of significant historical meaning. So um, I'll give you an example with the Cambridge kids. Um, Princess Charlotte is Charlotte Elizabeth Diana. Prince George is George Alexander Louis. And Prince Louis is Louis Arthur Charles. So um, they do have longer names than most non-royal babies. I feel like in this generation, they're giving them two middle names and a first name, obviously. But in old uh, previous generations they had four names like William Art like William is William Arthur Philip Louis that's a mm -hmm. lot of names I guess since they don't really have a last name to speak of they have to make up for it in well yeah 100 middle names <laughs> so okay next fact is <laughs> All of what goes into the actual announcement of the royal baby's birth. I mean, this is quite an event. So put your seatbelts on. I'm going to take you <laughs> on a ride um, around all of the events that goes on. So first of all, the queen must be notified of the birth before anyone else. Then an official birth announcement is posted outside of Buckingham Palace. Following the official announcement, a town crier shares the news outside the palace with any crowds. Then the Tower of London holds a 62 gun salute, which takes about 10 minutes to complete. After that, there is a 41 gun salute at noon from Green Park, which is an official royal park. Um, and then there are also some notable landmarks that display the news for the public to see. So think the London Eye, Tower Bridge, Trafalgar, Trafalgar Square. Um, and of course, you know, this doesn't happen with every royal baby, but in recent decades, we've seen mom stand out on the hospital steps with the baby for photos. So it was actually Princess Diana that started that trend, stepping out on the Lindo wing. Um, but prior to that, Queen Elizabeth would actually stand on the balcony of Buckingham Palace uh, following the births of her children. So um, lots of stuff going around with royal births. There are lots of events that have to take place along with that announcement. And speaking of stepping out on the steps of the Lindo Wing, Kate actually wins the record for the fastest appearance um, after giving birth with baby Louie. So she was actually standing on the steps of the Lindo wing just seven hours after giving birth. Can you imagine okay. that? No, I have so many thoughts on the Lindo wing and how I think that's just a crazy tradition. But I mean, Kate apparently had like an army <laughs> of people in that room to help get her good and ready to go to debut sure. the baby. My gosh. Yeah, I mean, I seven hours. Wow. That's a pretty quick turnaround. That's wild. So if you have seen the photos of Kate on the steps of the Lindo wing, you might recall seeing her little baby swaddled in this delicate white blanket. You know what I'm talking about, Rachel? Oh yeah. So the Royal babies get their blankets for these photos from a company called G.H. Hurt and Son. Um, they actually make luxury knitted shawls um, and they've been in business for more than a century. They're located in Nottingham, England and all of the Cambridge kids have been wrapped in these blankets. Even Prince William received one when he was born and I was actually on their website and they just have really, really stunning knitted lace baby blankets. So if you're in the market for a luxury baby shawl, go check them That's out. That's a good find. That's a really good find. I could totally see myself giving that at baby showers from here on out. I was going to say, yes, it would make a really, really stunning gift for, for someone who is expecting a baby. And who loves the Royals Absolutely. or who doesn't. Even if you don't, I mean, it's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful, yeah, beautiful. Blanket. 
So next fact is the Archbishop of Canterbury is the one that baptizes the royal baby. Um, he is the most senior bishop in the Church of England. Now they've done christenings at various chapels, but no matter where they do it, he's always present for this occasion. Um, and I did not know this, but royal christenings are always done with water from the River Jordan, which is mm -hmm. the location um, that is believed to be where John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So I thought that I was love that. That's so cool. Next fact is it is common for royal babies to have several godparents. So I know you know this, but mm -hmm. Princess Charlotte has five, Prince George has seven, and Prince Louis has six. So they have a lot of people in their life to help guide them and um, check in on them as they grow up. Do you have godparents? I do not. Do you? I don't, I don't either. I don't either. So, you know, I know. I, I think that's pretty big in the Catholic faith. Um, I, I think I'm Baptist. Or, and I'm you? Methodist. Yeah. See, I don't think it's as big in the Baptist and Methodist church. But they're not Catholic. They're Protestant. Yeah, well, they're, well, they're uh, who the Royals. Yeah. Yeah. They're church of England, but I mean, I feel like it's probably customary and, you know, other, um, denominations as well. Um, but especially with the Royals, I feel like they probably, it's probably I a, want a godparent. Would anybody like to adopt me as their <laughs> godchild? I'm 35. <laughs> I don't require a whole lot of help anymore. Maybe, so. maybe you can be a godparent. I would love to be a godparent. That would that be great. Be, yeah. Somebody make me a godparent. All right, so <laughs> let's <laughs> let's transition on to our um, <laughs> our next fact here. Royal babies are presented with a passport at the time of their birth. So since they travel at such a young age with their parents, they get their passport right away, so they don't have any issues, and they can bounce from country to country. So I thought that was pretty cool. And that Wait, was do they I just take the picture know. like right there, and then that's their passport? <laughs> no, I'm not being serious. Like, is that their passport photo, like right out of the womb? I'm not being facetious. That is a great question, and one that I did not ask myself, um, <laughs> but. Uh, they may have to do that. <laughs> Just clean them off, take a quick snap. There they are. Swaddled in their lace blanket. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Um, okay, so royal kids also have nannies to help their parents. It's very common. Um, now, they used to stay with their nanny up until they started school. But Princess Diana and um, Kate actually had their kids attend nursery school as young kids. So they do, the Cambridge kids do have a nanny. You've probably seen her in photos. Um, I've, I've seen her in a couple of their photos before, uh, but they also still go to nursery school during the day. Mm -hmm. Or at least they did before they started regular school. I guess Louis probably still goes to nursery. Mm -hmm. um, and then up until William and Harry's generation, young royals, only wore dresses for the first few years of their life, regardless of whether or not they were a girl or a boy. Did you know that? No. Really? So yes. And there are actually photos of Prince Charles in dresses until he was like two or three. Um, so after the first few years of life that, you know, once they, once they're a few years old, they can transition into wearing shorts or trousers, but it is still, a rule, I guess we'd call it a rule, a tradition today, even today, that young royal boys always wear shorts when they're out in public um, mm -hmm. up until they're about eight years old. So I know you've yeah. seen pictures of Prince George in shorts before, but back in Prince Charles' day when he was coming up, he wore dresses as a baby. Well, how about that? Yeah, I, that was, I feel like I learned so much doing this. No, segment. this is such a good segment <laughs> because I haven't known 90% of this. Good. I always feel like I succeeded when I teach you something you didn't know. You've you know taught so me a lot. Some of it has disturbed me, but you've taught me a lot. <laughs> So um, we're almost done here. I've got a few more. Uh, the only official annual engagement that royal babies have to attend is Trooping the Color. So otherwise, after they're born, when they're young, um, when their parents have things to go to, they'll be in their child care with their nanny. But they do always show up on the balcony for Trooping the Color since it's their um, grandmother or their great grandmother now or 
yeah, or whoever, uh, the monarch's birthday. <laughs> whoever so, you are, Elizabeth. <laughs> whoever she may be to them. <laughs> um, so also, a royal kids must go by their formal name in public, even if they have an informal nickname at their home. So I That's, obviously What have, about Harry, though? Because Harry's real name is Henry. Well, I, so I think that's actually a really interesting point and not something that I had thought of. Cause I was going to say, you know, for example, let's just say they call Charlotte, I don't know, Charlie at home. They call whatever. her Lottie at home. Do they? Yeah. Okay. I see. I, okay. So if they call her Lottie at home, like she would still go by Charlotte in public and same with Kate, you hear her referring to yeah. herself as Catherine. Um, but Harry is a really good point. And I almost wonder like, if there was an exception for him yeah well in another example to your point is they called um william wills at home but of course he's always been william in public yes yes and i i did know that i actually i don't know if i knew that they called charlotte lottie at home that's really really cute I'm isn't sure. that adorable yes i love that i love mm -hmm. that name all right so we've got one more Final fact, this one I did not get off of Good Housekeeping. I found it on another website. I'm trying to remember where I pulled this one from. But the Royal Kitchen staff, they've got several employees that work in there, different chefs and, and cooks in the kitchen. And they've got two full-time staff members in the kitchen solely dedicated to the children's diets. So they make all like the kid-friendly meals and they're super healthy. They puree fresh baby food. So they'll do fresh fruits and vegetables like pureed chicken and lamb and peas and carrots and cauliflower. Those are all really popular baby foods. Of course, the royal kids are only fed organic fruits and vegetables. Um, and one of their past chefs, I know we've talked about Chef Darren McGrady a few times on here. He actually was interviewed once and said the first meal of baby food that Prince William and Prince Harry had when they were young was steamed apples and pears from the Sandringham estate. That actually sounds good. I might. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. I would love to have, if I had kids, I would love to have a staff member hand puree all the baby food. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty nice. There's so, something about that list that I would like not like to have like a freaking army and audience at my birth or not at my birth but at <laughs> the birth but um I would like to have someone hand puree my child's food I, sh I would like that so that wraps up the segment for today on royal babies I thought that was really fun and I and that might be one of my favorite segments you've ever done that was so good, oh, good. I good. learned so much and by the way the entire I was obviously listening but the entire time I was practicing how to say James Middleton's wife's name. And I think I've got it. Elise, Elise, Elise. I don't know why I cannot get it together with that name when I'm reading it, like, you know, in just life, but Can you say her maiden name. No, don't go there. With me. <laughs> <laughs> don't push it. Next That's cruel. <laughs> no, her name is Elise Middleton now. Okay. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh, what a week. I'm so happy for like a full slate of news. We we came back September 1st. Today is September, well, the day the episode drops is September 22nd. We were kind of like, where are they at? Where's the news app? But it came back in full force today. So listeners don't forget to follow us on instagram at podcast royal send us a dm like sweet maria we appreciate those so much email us at hello podcast royal at gmail.com and don't forget to follow rate review our podcast all of it thank you so much for tuning into episode 38 of podcast royal have a great week and the next time you hear me i will be 35 years old so Yay, early birthday thank you until then have a great week. Bye. Bye.